And there's an as another aspect to this as well, I believe, isn't there? The, the sexual selection side of things? Sexual selection was Darwin's other great contribution. Well, he made many great contributions, but one of his other contributions. Sexual selection is um, the, the effect whereby um, usually females choosing males causes males to develop characteristics which are not good for survival, but which are good for being attractive to females. And things like bird of paradise, male bird of paradise, male pheasants, male peacocks, uh, some fish, some insects, these are all sexually selected uh, as opposed to naturally selected. And you can see that it's essentially the same principle, but survival is not involved. In fact, quite the contrary. Um, animals like peacocks, males like, like peacocks, tend to be rather bad at surviving. And there's a very interesting sequence, of, uh, sequence in the DVD, uh, in the film, where you're interviewing some single women in the United States who are looking for um, sperm donors. Yes. And, and the sort of qualities that they're looking for. Um, it turns out they weren't just all looking for alpha males. No, that's right. Um, in a way, th this, this idea of, of women choosing sperm donors, um, it's a kind of sexual selection. They don't actually see the men who are donating sperm. What they see are dossiers, forms that these men have filled in. So they look down and they say, ah, oh, yes, yeah, this one likes football, this one likes literature, uh, this one likes Aston Martin cars, or whatever it is. Um, and so they choose their donor on the basis of these characteristics that the men have filled in. And uh, one of the conclusions that the, um, that the man who runs the sperm donor clinic had come to is that they very often go for the nicest guys uh, they'd very often go for the sort of person you'd like to meet, the sort of person you'd, you'd, you'd like to have as a companion or a friend. Not quite sure what you make of that, but, but that, was, that was the finding. Are you, are you religious at all? I mean, do you no, pray? No, not. You're not. You're not religious at all. Do I look religious? I hope you die slowly and you f***ing burn in hell, you damn blasphemy. And you should realize that your entire life has been a delusion and that right now your destiny is all f***ed up, atheist. Go f*** yourself. You, sir, are an absolute ass. Your feigned intelligence is nothing more than the fart of God. You suck. Go burn in hell. Satan will enjoy torturing you. Christian living for God. There is a God, her created all of us. The only one who is blinded are the unsaved and stubborn. Everything Darwin said is wrong and evolution has never been proven and nothing is evolving now. The Bible is the best book. <gasps> nothing even comes close to its accuracy and if you think God's judgment is bad, the devil has worse in store for all unbelievers. No punctuation at all in that one. Some correspondence there from just some of the followers of Gentle Jesus, Meek and Mild. <laughs> This is really where the opposition to evolution comes from, isn't it, Richard? I mean, is, is there really any serious opposition to the theory of evolution by natural selection from any sources other than the religious ones? No, um, I, don't think, I don't think so. Um, there's some opposition to the... Um, there's some disagreement about the relative importance of natural selection as opposed to other forces in evolution. There is absolutely no opposition among serious scientists as to the fact of evolution, the fact that we are cousins of chimpanzees and cousins of octopuses and cousins of bacteria, that is totally undisputed. There is a certain amount of disagreement about the relative importance of natural selection and, and other forces in evolution, um, random forces, for example. Um, but, the, but as you say, by far the most important opposition does come from, from religious sources. Not, I hasten to say, from respectable, reputable religious sources like bishops and archbishops and cardinals and things. I mean, they're all 100% behind evolution. Nevertheless, something between 40 and 50% of the American public and the British public um, subscribe to the view that humans were created by God, specially uh, within the last 10,000 years, as opposed to being evolved from, from other species. That's more than 40% of the population of America and Britain subscribe to a view which is downright dotty. I and mean, it's not just wrong, it's, it's hugely, colossally wrong. 
uh, the date, for example, I mean, the true date of, the true date when evolution began is about, well, certainly more than 3.5 billion, 3 billion years, because we have fossil evi evidence for that. So 10,000 years compared to 3.5 billion years. Um, that's equivalent to believing that, um, the, the, that the width of North America is, is to be measured in, in, in yards. Um, the distance from New York to San Francisco is, is something like 20 yards. That's the, the scale of the error we're talking about. This is the scale of the error which is believed by 44% by of the American public, according to a 2008 Gallup poll. That's what we're up against. And a term that we're hearing more and more of is that wonderful oxymoron, creation science. What's, yeah. what's that all about? Um, well, um, there have been various attempts, mostly in America, to subvert scientific education. And uh, in America, it's taboo to teach religion in science classes. There's a constitutional prohibition against bringing religion in to, to uh, classes. So there have been various ruses to get around this, and one of them is called creation science. It, it then resurfaced under another name, intelligent design theory. It's identical. Uh, but you change the name in order to smuggle things through. Creation science um, was sh uh, um, struck down in an important American court, I forget exactly when, uh, and was shown in the court to be religion. And therefore, it was reinvented as intelligent design, which was again struck down much more recently in Dover, Pennsylvania. Um, there was a rather interesting um, piece of evidence that was brought before the Dover court. A, a textbook called Of Pandas and People had been written for the earlier creation science manifestation of this nonsense. And it had creation, creation, creation throughout the book. And then a new edition of the book came out that had intelligent design instead of creation. And it was actually literally done by a Microsoft Word type cut and paste. I mean, you know, su substitute the word intelligent design for creation science wherever you find it. And there was one, I forget exactly what it was, but there was one key place where, where they got it wrong. And so you could actually tell. It said just something like cre, and, then, and then, the, then the rest of intelligent design. I forget exactly how it worked. It reminds me a little bit of the story that um, a, a literary agent t told me of a, of a novelist who had written a novel about um, a man called David. And the, when the novel was just about to go to finally pub publication, to go to final press, the novelist decided that this, his character wasn't really a David. He seemed more like a Kevin. So he went right through with a word processor saying, you know, Wherever you, the computer was told, wherever you find David, substitute Kevin, which was fine, except that the hero went to Florence. <laughs> I see you're ahead of me, okay. <laughs>